Brief Group Limited has gone into receivership, but the company will continue to operate as usual, says the receivers. Price Waterhouse Cooper receiver Colin McCloy announced the Auckland based company's receivership, saying he had been appointed to Reef Group and its associated entities. Reef Group's website says the company has interests across the South Pacific, including eight cargo ships, a fleet of long line of fishing vessels, a business supplying bulk fuel to a dozen Pacific Island nations, and the production and export of New Ayan Norni juice. Mr. McLeod said they are committed to doing the best they can for the future of Reef Group, its shipping business and services provided in the South Pacific. They will work diligently with relevant parties on the possible business and asset sale of the Reef Group. Yesterday afternoon, New Year government issued a press release stating Reef Group Limited has been placed into receivership. The Premier is in Auckland and is now working with Reef and the receivers to determine the long-term impact of the Reef receivership and what this means for New Year's shipping services. The most pressing concern is the immediate sailing of the Christmas vessel and the shorter-term services to New Year. Shipping services are a vital part of Niue's economy and the government of Niue is committed to ensuring that the island continues to have supplies for goods and services, including fuel. As soon as the situation is clear, the Premier will make an announcement. Reef shipping agent on the island said there has been adv no advisory from the head office as of yesterday, but the schedule for the Christmas voyage is still confirmed to arrive on Niue on the 15th of December. Reef Shipping Services currently service Fiji, New Caledonia, Vanuatu, Samoa, Tonga American Samoa, Cook Islands, Niue, Tuvalu and Kiribati. Today, National Disaster Council issued a notice reminding the public that Niue is still under drought watch. Concerns are mounting also as a fire engulfing the areas between the hospital and Halamahanga is continuing on today without a sign of dying off. The council said the, they urged the public to refrain from burning around the island because of dry conditions. The council emphasised to the public the importance of the advisory that was also advised on the 23rd of August this year. At this stage, the Council is also considering an island-wide ba fire ban if fires have been lit irresponsibly, as demonstrated over the weekend. A set of principles to guide leaders on the island can only be as good as the paper it's written on. That was the statement made by Commonwealth Pacific Governance Facility Director Moses Sayatala. Mr. Sayatala arrived on the island to revisit discussions previously held with stakeholders on the island on drafting a guideline of principles for different leaders. Mr. Saitala said the principles is guideline on what the people and the government wish to discuss and implement. Our people need to understand them because these principles are actually based from what they want from their public leaders. So. It is very, very significant that the people at the grassroots level understand what this principle means uh, because they are there just because that's what they want their leaders to conduct themselves against. It's for their own. It's been designed, the principle are designed that the leaders' entire public life is to help the people that, uh, that, they, that they, they represent. Uh, in Parliament, so that's that's very very important. Now that can come through a lot of ways. You know. For example, um, if the Parliament uh, of Norway uh, is going to be the custodian of these principles, then obviously uh, they should be responsible for making sure that we have uh, continuing um, consultations with villages village people at, at, at the village level so that they fully understand what the principles are. Uh, we can have uh, role plays and things like that, dramas, uh, just to be able to get the message across in terms of um, these principles. However, in order for the principles to be effective, there must be an understanding 
of where the information can be provided and what the information is. The difficulty really uh, comes in uh, to any leader when his primary responsibility to the people uh, is being diminished by his own uh, private interests. That's where the, always the challenge is. As time goes by, in modern days now, there are a lot of uh, opportunities out there for which leaders are so close to, it, to them that the, the temptation is that, uh, let's take it, let, let me take it, uh, rather, than let, uh, rather than let my community take it, you know, mm -hmm. let me take it. You know. So opportunities in modern, modern time are quite plentiful and uh, uh, offering to our people. So the difficulty uh, really comes from there as a challenge to individual members. Now, the principles are supposed to be something like the people of, some, of, 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 of New USA. These are the kind of ethical standards that we expect from our leaders. And we would like our leader to conduct himself according to those standards and those expectations that we have for them. So it's a guide to them. Um, the degree of it, how they actually violate that uh, will actually be determined uh, when those principles are enforced. So if there's a complaint against um, a member of parliament, oh, uh, this guy is not uh, respecting uh, us uh, because he has uh, um, gained more than us uh, from, from this opportunity that was supposed to be in our village, uh, but instead um, that opportunity has been changed into a private business. <laughs> uh, that kind of complaint really can demonstrate, you know, where a leader uh, is contravening uh, the standards and the expectations of uh, society from him as a public leader. How do you overcome, how do you make your leaders accountable? I know in Niue we always have these issues when people say, oh, um, we don't want to cause any problems, we don't want to raise any issues in case, you know, uh, there are consequences because we have such a small society, a small community. Yes, yes. It is, and it's also being small, it's also very important uh, that implementing these principles uh, will not also be something that will complicate things because we have to keep it as simple as possible. Now, in, this is, this is the, the, the other part of the principle. Uh, while we spend a lot of time developing what the principle should be, um, the principles themselves will be, be, will be it's as well as first the paper they are written on, if they are not enforced. Okay? So the other part of the principle is exactly how are we going to enforce this principle? This is, this is very, very important. Because without these mechanisms to enforce the principles, then the principles become you know, almost important. You know, and they will be just be shelf, uh, not to be seen again. So uh, that me mechanisms in terms of enforcement uh, have to be designed. But in the context of, 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 of Newark, um, I would really think that the design of that enforcement mechanisms has to be very simplistic, uh, not to copy what other countries have, because they are more bigger uh, and therefore more elaborate in terms of what the process should be. So uh, those are the challenges that we are going to work through it this week, and hopefully we will be able to, uh, to agree on how to go forward in terms of that uh, mechanisms and and kind of settle those, those, those difficulties that we think we are having here in the way. As for the placement of the draft of the principles and implementation phase, Mr. Saitala and the participants at the workshop will determine that at the end of the consultations.
This morning, La Kepa Malay Law Preschool welcomed some much needed playground equipment for their 20 students. The most colorful display of equipment on the front lawn of the preschool with parents joining in to say farewell for to 2012 and four of the students who will move on to early childhood learning at Halamahanga. Representative from the preschool, Mrs. Sifa Yuani, said they're very fortunate to receive some of the equipment from Asafo and Mary Fatamaka in New Zealand. And a great response from the New Zealand High Commission sees many playground equipment from slides to plastic cars and bikes and motor mowers. She said the group, which makes up of mostly children from other villages, want to acknowledge their gratitude to the High Commissioner, His Excellency Mark Blumsky, and to Asafo and Mary Fatamaka, but especially to Mary Mangatungia and family for creating an environment of learning and preparation for their little ones to join ECE in Halamahanga. The kids are sure to look forward to the beginning of next year when they will enjoy the rest of the new equipment. We wish the Lakepa Malay Loa Preschool a fantastic Christmas break and New Year. Namakulu Village held its 90th Jubilee on Saturday as fam families joined the elders of the village to celebrate its milestone and bless the renewal of the church and meeting room. The other celebration is the new plaque brought especially to acknowledge the families that have developed and helped to build and continue to build Namakulu to this day. Elder of the village, Dak Willilipitoa, continued to encourage all families and friends of Namukulu to remember the ancestors who built and support the stands for the village to be independent. Representatives who spoke share the same sentiments to help develop and continue the assistance for the village. They also thank the church minister who, with his son, renewed parts of the church and meeting room. The village representatives from New Zealand also arrived for the big day. Namukulu's 90th birthday ended with performances from the Namukulu families. our news bulletin for tonight. Good evening.